This is Dusty Jones here with part two of uh, Figure It Numbers presentation. Hopefully you've viewed part one. If not, maybe you should. I wanted to first bring up a couple of websites uh, that will help you as you explore number sequences. One is the Online Encyclopedia of Integer Sequences and the, another is Wolfram Math World. At each of these sites you can type in a term like triangular numbers or oblong numbers or Fibonacci numbers, Pythagorean triples, uh, and get a lot of great information. Spreadsheets are also helpful tools for exploring sequences and uh, they can easily handle recursive formulas or explicit formulas. Uh, here if we look at uh, this on the left side we've got uh, triangular numbers and I've started by saying the first triangular number is one. The second triangular number would be uh, the previous triangular number plus uh, two uh, which is cells the information from cells B2 plus A3 and by filling that down we end up getting this information down here um, and recursively. Using explicit formulas here on the right side uh, still looking at the triangular numbers we one formula for the triangular numbers is n uh, times n plus one all divided by two and that information for n is located in cell A2 here and then later uh, cell A6 uh, by filling this formula down uh, we're able to get the same triangular number sequence. What I'd like you to do now is to work backwards and use formulas or pictures or some other reasoning to determine the values for T sub 0 and S sub 0. That is the, the zeroth triangular number and the zeroth squared number or in another way to say that the triangular number that comes before T1 and the square number that comes before S1. In the triangular numbers there's a relationship that the nth triangular number T sub n is the previous triangular number T sub n minus 1 uh, plus n plus that index that you're looking at. So pictorially uh, if the first triangular number is 1 the second triangular number is 1 plus 2. The third triangular number is the second triangular number these three dots plus 3 and the fourth triangular number is the previous triangular number uh, these six dots plus four. We can also see, also see this numerically uh, for n and t sub n uh, that we take a number the previous triangular number plus the index so one plus two to get three and now we take the previous triangular number three uh, plus the index three to get six and so on. Algebraically, uh, we can show that the nth triangular number is the previous triangular number plus n. Uh, using this formula for the triangular numbers, one half times n times n plus one. If we substitute in n minus one for n in the formula, we get a formula for t sub n minus one. Uh, t sub n minus one is the product of one half n minus one and n minus 1 plus 1. I get these by sub substituting n minus 1 in for n in the previous formula. This n minus 1 plus 1 simplifies and so ultimately we get the formula t sub n minus 1 is 1 half times n minus 1 times n. If we add n to both sides, I'm trying to get a formula that looks something like this. t sub n minus 1 plus n is one half times n minus one times n plus n. Factoring one half n from both terms on the right side gives me one half n times n minus one plus two. This cleans up a little bit to be one half times n times n plus one and that's the formula for t sub n. So we get that t sub n minus one plus n is equal to t sub n algebraically. with square numbers. I want to note that a square number is 2 times the previous triangular number plus n, the index. So pictorially uh, we have S1 is 
1, which is 2 times 0, that's the zeroth triangular number, plus 1. S2 is 2 copies in blue of the first triangular number, plus 2 in yellow. S3 is 2 copies of the second triangular number, plus 3 in yellow. And S sub 4 is 2 copies of the third triangular number in blue, plus 4, the index, in yellow. And by noting numerically in the table, uh, the index 1 through 4, uh, the triangular numbers 1, 3, 6, and 10, we can show numerically that we get those square numbers 1, 4, 9, and 16. Algebraically, um, we can do the same sort of thing. Again, I'll use the formula for t sub n, 1 half times n times n plus 1. Substituting n minus 1 in for n in the formula gets me down to this formula we had a few slides ago. t sub n minus 1 is 1 half times the quantity n minus 1 times n. To make this uh, look like s sub n equals 2 times t sub n minus 1, plus n, I'll multiply both sides by 2 to get 2 t sub n minus 1 is n minus 1 times n, which simplifies to n squared minus n. Now if I add n to both sides, I get 2 t sub n minus 1 plus n equals n squared minus n plus n, and that equals n squared, uh, which is the same as the explicit formula for s sub n. Other figurate numbers exist. Here are the first three pentagonal numbers, so named because uh, these dots have been arranged in a pentagon. Uh, the first pentagonal number is 1, the second is 5, and the third is 12. This second pentagonal number has two dots, making up each side of the pentagon. Uh, this third has three dots, making up each side, but also notice that the original pentagon, uh, I'm sorry, the second pentagonal number, p sub 2, is embedded in there. Can you see that p sub n is 3 times the previous triangular number plus the index n? Pictorially, uh, if we start with p sub 1 is 1, we get p sub 2 is 3 of the previous triangular numbers uh, plus 2 copies I'm sorry, plus the 2 for the index in blue. And in p sub 3 we have 3 of the previous triangular number, 3 threes, plus the index of 3. Numerically we can also see this pattern. There's another way to represent uh, pentagonal numbers, uh, 1, 5, and 12, in looking more like a house. Can you see a relationship on these pictures uh, between the square numbers, the triangular numbers, and the pentagonal numbers. Some exercises I'd like you to try is to list the first ten pentagonal numbers. Write an explicit formula uh, for p sub n, perhaps using uh, some relationships that you've noticed between p sub n, s sub n, and t sub n. I'd also like for you to write a recursive formula for p sub n, and use some algebra to show that three times the previous triangular number plus n is the nth square number plus the previous triangular number. Also, investigate this. If you triple a pentagonal number, if you multiply it by 3, do you always get a triangular number? Is it always going to work? And if so, how can you prove it? The triangular numbers can also be found in Pascal's triangle. Get a copy of Pascal's triangle and look for them. And, and after you find out where they are, think about why they are where they are. 